Let's ask Dan Weeder. I know the Dan Weederer knew from the Chicago Tribune that as soon as the Bears would find a general manager, the first question from Waddle and Sylvie would be, did George drive them back to Lake Forest or was there a professional car service? So, uh, Dan, it's a great way to bring in on the Corona hotline. What is your call as Ryan Pace was videotaped? Poles, Poles, Ryan Poles. Uh, Oh, I'm sorry, Ryan. I already made the mistake. As Ryan Poles was being picked up by George McCaskey, uh, was was it to go into George's car or into a car service car? My guess is George parked in remote parking and wanted to try out the new airport transit system. <laughs> now that that's back up and running, and so they got there and then went down and went upstairs and got on the ATS and, and, and rolled over to the new lot over there and, and then took off from there. They saved us a couple bucks. Now you can spend your money on a new scout. <laughs> there it is. And, and away they go. Uh, <laughs> And if they I mean, still <laughs> kept him in the building and signed him again, like I said, then you've got to question the new hire, not just the <laughs> hirer, the hiree. Well, well, listen, we are going to question these new hires regardless, right? <laughs> yes, and, and, that is and, true. And this, this, is, this is nothing against Ryan Poles. It's nothing against the next head coach of the Chicago Bears. It's just what the Bears have conditioned us to do over time. And so we're just going to have to get used to that in the next few weeks, few months, you know, leading up into – to September of, of sort of balancing the excitement with the natural skepticism with the, I don't know how to feel about this because there's a lot of we'll see to this whole equation, right? Yes. Yeah, absolutely. So the, the one thing that is being floated out there is that this will be his call on the coaching hire. Is that what you're hearing? And to us, that sounds good compared to what they've done in the past. It's what they've promised. Right. And so you better not go back on your biggest promise right out of the gates. And and I would imagine that in the early stages of these virtual interviews, they made that pretty clear to these candidates that, listen, we are going to give you some latitude to to make this coaching decision. So we'd like to have an idea of what your shortlist looks like. Maybe we can vet a couple of these guys in advance while we're trying to, to match up lists for all these different guys. Remember, this is, you know, more than two dozen interviews that they did with GM and head coaching candidates. And so now it should be Ryan Poles' task to find the next coach. It should be a, a quick task because obviously there's a bunch of other teams still still in that hiring process. It seems like Brian Dable to New York is becoming escalating buzz that is going to at least disappoint a, a, a segment of this fan base here who sees what he could have been for Justin Fields. But now it's up to Ryan Poles to figure out what his vision is for that position, uh, the head coaching position and the quarterback position in tandem, right, to try to set this thing off on the right foot. But when you look at his resume, what do you think, Dan? Well, what I see at the minimum is that he's been part of an organization that knows how to do this, right? The Chiefs have been to the playoffs eight of the last nine years. They're they're playing in the AFC Championship game for the fourth consecutive January. They're on the doorstep of their third consecutive Super Bowl. They've gone through a process of taking a uh, raw quarterback and turning him into a Hall of Famer, right? And, 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 and having witnessed that, that should at least give you some insight into how championship teams can be built. Ryan Poles has worked... Uh, his way up, right? A, a few different stints and different roles in, in college scouting in that organization. He has worked under three different general managers, Scott Pioli, John Dorsey, and now Brett Beach, and, and, and has had a lot of learning under each one of those. I think one thing that's interesting with Ryan is that he's kind of talked openly about going through the GM interviewing process a year ago when he was uh, in line for the Carolina Panthers job and saying that it, it was really something that, that kind of forced him to crystallize a vision and, and be able to articulate philosophies on how you build a team and how you want to, to get a championship foundation established. And, and doing that, he has said, is, has given him confidence. And so now it's, it's his turn to take that confidence and, and, and take over a job that, that many around the league see as a heavy lift in trying to get the Bears team back to, to where it wants to go. Dan, do you look at it as a great thing that not only did he survive through three general managers, but like you mentioned, Carolina, the Giants, the Bears, the Vikings, they all viewed him as their possible general manager. He was a finalist for all four jobs. For sure, for sure. And it it tells you about presence, right? It tells you about vision and presence in a guy and and where that is. Now, listen, all these guys that interview for a position for an NFL general manager role are going to be sharp. They're going to be talented. It's it's not a lot of guys that get interviews are just complete boobs, right, and don't know what they're doing on any level. And so now it's just about applying that within the infrastructure of the team you join within the dynamics 
of the team you join. If there's one red flag for me, it's that, it's that Ryan Poles is very, very young, right? He spent a lot of his time in one organization, like the Chiefs, right? Just similar to, to Ryan Pace. And so the Bears hopefully learned through the Ryan Pace experience that they have to provide resources to a general manager who can, you know, help him recognize his blind spots, who can help him assist, you know, on landmark decisions that set the direction for a franchise that, that can help him put out fires. One thing you hear a lot from first-time general managers and first-time head coaches is how startling it can be the amount of time you have to spend putting out fires. And so you have to take on this sort of mayoral role where you have to have a fire chief, right? Somebody that can help you put out fires so you can sort of tend to the more important business of of setting a foundation for a championship football team. These are all things that a young first-time general manager is going to have to learn, and it's they're, they're things he's going to have to learn with uh, oversight from a chairman who has basically told you, I've never overseen a general manager before, and I'm going to need your help in overseeing you. Dan Weeder joining us. Ryan Poles is the new Bears general manager from the Kansas City Chiefs. Word is, is he will be able to interview and hire the coach on his own. So I have two coaching questions here, Dan. Yeah. Number one, why were they interviewing coaching candidates if they didn't have the general manager in place who would eventually hire the coach? Yeah, the answer to that is uh, I need to ask the people that are in charge of that to give us their answer on that because that's the top question on my list right now. There may be uh, you know, logic behind it. Again, they may have been probing these GM candidates all along the way to say, hey, can we get some, some research done on, on some of your coaching candidates while we're going through our own process? But certainly if you're going to conduct a coaching search from here with Ryan Poles in charge, you have to give him the freedom to do it as he wants to do it with his candidate list with his own, you know, interview questions for all of these things to, to, to kind of set a, a, a tone for how you want to come out of the gates. And so that, Sylvia, that's a great question that, that they need to answer for us the next time they speak with us. All right. And then we know that Eberflus, Quinn, and Caldwell are getting second interviews. They're first with him. Do you have a favorite? And do you believe there's any other people out there that he will expand to? I have heard buzz that Todd Bowles is also in the mix. Uh, for, for Ryan Poles, and we'll see if that comes to fruition. But that, that has been floated out there uh, from a couple of different people to say keep keep an eye on that name as well. Uh, I don't have a favorite right now. Um, Going to have to just kind of figure out where it's at. I don't know why the Jim Caldwell name just gives you pause. It just feels like if, if, if you wound up with Ryan Poles and Jim Caldwell, it would just be a different version of Ryan Pace and John Fox. You know right? why, just, you know why, Dan? And I and listen, this will sound bad, and, 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 and I don't mean it to sound that way. But the NFL is different than it was when Jim Caldwell was coaching most recently. And Jim's got a very, very, very good resume. But yeah. you ask the question at the age of 66 or 67, and I don't mean this to be an ageist approach, but I guess it is, so I apologize for it. But you ask your question, are you hiring a guy that you want to be the head coach, hopefully for the next 10 years or just for the next three years to get you back on track? And if, in fact... For whatever reason, Jim Caldwell decides that, you know, he doesn't want to stay in this business for an extended period of time. At that point, then you're changing your offense potentially again for your quarterback. So I would say, and maybe it, it's, you know, I'm misguided for feeling this way, but that would be my only, that would be the only thing that would deter me from being really excited about Jim Caldwell because Jim has done a really nice job over the course of his career. Do you understand what I'm saying? I do understand what you're saying, and he's obviously had some success in Detroit, which not a lot yes. of other people have on their resume, which is something to, to take note of. I think what you want to do in hiring this coach is, is believe that he can lead you to the Super Bowl, believe that he can energize things right away because you're not close to the Super Bowl. We're all in agreement on this show right, right now that the Bears aren't close to that. And so the initial phase of this is, is creating an energy that, that, that people can feed off and, and, and get that thing going in the right direction. I don't worry about 10 years from now that much because nobody lasts that long anymore. It just doesn't happen in this league. The, the, the numbers tell you that, you know, 90% of these guys don't even make it to the end of their, their first coaching contract because of the way this league is structured. So I, I don't worry about thinking 10 years out as much as, as does this guy have the offensive vision and philosophy to take our, you know, highly invested quarterback to the levels that we think he can go to. And, and can he, can he light a, a, a fire that gets this thing going in the right direction as soon as possible, because listen, you know, we, we've spent the last couple of days talking about Aaron Rodgers' futures as well. There may be a, a door that opens that you didn't expect to open quicker than you thought because this division is going to be yes. wide open yes. if Aaron Rodgers isn't back in Green Bay. 